When you're around people that accept mediocrity, you do too. You then become a person that you're not even proud of. When you surround yourself with people who accept mediocrity and think they're not so great, you believe that too. You therefore believe you don't deserve better people around you. And it's this nonsense lie that you tell yourself that holds you back forever. It's baloney. Welcome to the Waste No Day podcast, a podcast specifically for and about the home services industry as it relates to plumbing, heating, air conditioning, and electrical. More than a podcast, Waste No Day is a credo, a determination, a mindset. It is a never-ending discipline. It is a refuse to lose pursuit. It is a wake-up call every morning to waste no day. Now here's your host, Brian Burton and Nate Minnick. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Waste No Day podcast. Your hosts, Nate and Brian, are hanging out with you again, and we are looking forward to a great episode today, talking with co-founder of Clover, Laura Kelly. Now, if that name strikes a bell with you, it may be because we had her husband on a couple weeks or months ago. I'm not sure how long it's been, but uh, it was a little bit ago. Several months, buddy. At this time. Time is just <laughs> flying by. And uh, we're turning to the feminine side, the fairer side of the equation now to talk about seven secrets behind making your company grow. It's going to be a great conversation with her and we are looking forward to diving into those seven keys. But before we do that, Brian and I are going to spend a little bit of time breaking down things for ourselves. And we're going to turn to Brian to start it off with our quote. Don't you see how much you have to offer? and yet you still settle for less. Marcus Aurelius. That, Come on, buddy. You know who that yeah, is. Yeah, that would that'd be from the Gladiator movie, yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he wasn't invented in the Gladiator it, yeah, movie. Yeah, but he's, he's uh, <laughs> depicted in the, in the storyline. Yeah, he is. I just love him in that movie, too. Yeah, yeah. Great, ca- great casting for that. Yeah, really, Scott killed it. Yes, uh, uh, looking forward to part two if uh, if it has any merit as part one did. That is from Meditations by Marcus Aurelius, and I don't know if that's a book, like he wrote a book, uh, and maybe it says it in there, but I don't remember, or if they just somebody piled up a whole bunch of his quotes and sayings and writings and journals, and and uh, just yeah. put a book together from it, but. Check it out. I think Audible right. for sure. Uh, YouTube possibly for free, but Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. Good stuff. It's just um, like quotes and sayings that and just things he came up with. And he had a lived a really interesting life. And the beginning of the book tells tells you his story. Not just an interesting life, but like his childhood is really cool. And I don't want to dig too far into it, but um, I, I I recommend listening to it or reading it or whatever it is you do if you. If you get time, just I'm into a lot of stoics right now. Just trying to, I don't know, be better at maintaining composure, you know, still, still with the temper a little bit that I, I need to just keep under control. And, um, yeah, the, the more, the more I find the more stoic I read, the more stoic I act. So it's a good hmm. way of just keeping the, keeping emotional balance in place, not getting too. Yeah, more than anything, like caught up in the moment, you know. Embrace it's something you embrace can't, the moment, right? No, not getting, not embracing it too much. Just, just, just knowing that whatever is going on right now, it ain't permanent. Mm. Let's just chill out, calm down, relax, and let things and let things go. And I don't mean be passive. I'm very proactive, but to not get too caught up in in the emotional. Uh, baggage of whatever's going on in your life in this moment. Uh, We're hearing a lot about it being a tough time in the industry, and it it is a somewhat tough time in the industry. It's not one of the tougher times in the industry, at least since I've been alive. But it's not, it's just less easy compared to the last few years. I'll say that certainly in HVAC. But um, just knowing that it's not permanent, it's another cycle. That's all it is, is another cycle. If you feel like it batting down the hatches a bit, you know, control spending, maintain profitability, get to training up the the weaker links on the sales force, 
get to training up the weaker leaks on uh, links on the technical side and make sure you're not having a lot of profit killing callbacks, but maintain composure. You'll be fine. I mean, you, you talk to the older guys, some of the OGs of this, of these industries. And it's, it's like a joke to them when you say, well, are you worried about the economy? I mean, you know, we've heard Ken Goodrich ask that question and all, all these older guys ask that question and they're just like, no, (laughs) why? (laughs) We've seen a lot worse than this. And it, you know, and those guys tend to grow in these economies. So they're going to maintain their composure. They're going to take a step back, assess, see what needs to be done, do it and be fine. It'll all be fine. Yeah. And, and, you know, of course that all depends that, you know, how leveraged you are and how well you've been running your business. Uh, There certainly are, downfalls in any stressful situation if you are not well suited for them uh but if you're doing the right well, things but and even you're doing them that's well a, like even if you're not well suited that is the kind of st- the stoicism thing the stoic philosophy is like even if you're not well suited and you're about to take a beating and believe me i've taken my share of beatings you are going to become stronger and better and more capable and more resilient as a result of it there are companies that are going to lose if we see a real significant down market. But how many billionaires have never lost a company or seen bankruptcy or foreclosure? I don't, I don't know that any of them have not been through that. Like it's just, it's you on your way to where you're going. Take the hit. Don't fall apart. Lead your team. Well, as long as you have a team to lead and, you know, be the source of strength for that team. That team just might be your girlfriend at home. You know what I mean? Doesn't matter whoever the team is. Maybe it's just the person in the mirror. But relax. Let's go. You got work to do. Now, speaking of billionaires, uh, our guest today is not afraid of billionaires. She regularly has worked with them in her career, not only now, but in the past. Laura Kelly is going to be bringing with us a lot of great secrets, and we're looking forward to talking with her about all the things that she has learned, not only in her business experience, but now working in the niche of home services. But before we get to that interview, it's time for that special time of the week where we focus on one of your amazing reviews. Brian, who are we highlighting today? A five-star review. Yes, it's a five-star review, but the title of the review is a five-star review Ah, with an exclamation point. Clever. Five stars, baby. I recommend listening to this podcast. Hey, we do too. It has helped me grow my skills and abilities. I did not know that these podcast episodes have so much information and free to the public. Everyone should listen to all episodes. Yes, go download all the episodes, please. Thank you. I had the opportunity to have Brian training my colleagues and I at work, and now I am excited to grow. Awesome job, guys. Huh. Hail love, one, two, three. How much did you pay him for that? One, two, three. Clearly in just vast amounts of knowledge and ability. (laughs) I mean, can you imagine what his paychecks are looking like having me at the shop? (laughs) (laughs) It's a requirement of employment. Uh, (laughs) Who is that? Hail Love. I wonder if that's Hayel from uh, Mr. Sparky in Phoenix. I was waiting for the deal to go down for for this Benjamin Franklin plumbing and and just kind of spinning my wheels for a minute. Went spent some time with the Sparkies here. Actually, spent some time with the one hour techs here as well. And then there's another Benjamin Franklin uh, in the East Valley, Eli Powers, Eli Power, and uh, Chris Russell. And I spent some time with their team as well. Had a great time with all of them. Man, you know what? Everywhere I go, I I realize it's like. Not the same people, but I, f- I always get this feeling like, hey, it's just more of us. Like everywhere I go, every state I go to. And if for those who don't know, I'll just pop in at a place from time to time on vacation and do some training and just meet some techs. Just get the reps, as I call it, get my reps in. And every time I go to a place, I'm like, now I see better or worse leadership. And I do see more or less presentable technicians which can be an issue for themselves. Um, But everywhere I go, I just see more groups of us. Like you always expect that it's different here or something. It's just, it's just people trying to do their thing, man. 
And uh, every time I see another place and another group of people, I love the industry a little bit more. That's great, Brian. And so I, hail love. One, two, three. If it's hail from Sparky, we appreciate you, bro. I hope you're still listening because this, uh, this review was in August of 2023. <clears throat> um, and if you would be so kind, if you enjoy the show, crack the uh, Apple Podcast app open. Scroll down to reviews. Go ahead and read them if you want to get some ideas on how to write one. Hit the five-star button. And you can just leave it there if you want. Or you can press write review, hit the five-star, and leave us a little message. And if you do that, we will read it on air. And we do appreciate that. And, of course, we also appreciate any suggestions that you have. We are always open to feedback and willing to hear what you'd love to hear. And what you're going to love to hear right now is a fantastic person who is living in the industry right now and bringing so much great advice and application to businesses all over the nation. Our guest today is Laura Kelly. She is the co-founder of Clover and is the driving force behind the success of nearly 400 home service companies. Clover clients grow an average of 30% year over year through Clover's Contractor Catapult Program. She's also spearheaded over 30 business growth events, collaborating with industry giants like Google and venture capitalists. Laura's consultancy spans billion-dollar enterprises and global brands, including Dell. Her transformative impact in the home service industry earned her top recognition as one of Arizona's top 50 women leaders in 2022. We're going to have a great conversation talking with her today. Welcome to the show, Laura. Yeah, cheers, Nate and Brian. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for joining us. And uh, I will say, Laura joined us on fairly short notice as we had a reschedule and uh, we're up against it. Yes, I did. Brian's but, hair is after getting fluffy with this transition. So if I didn't show up, his hair is, might get more fluffy. fluffy. So yeah. I, I, I had to take <laughs> one for the team, what, you know? Like three quarters of an inch long, <laughs> Nate, my hair. Yeah, maybe but, Josh could know, do something with that. Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> Don't leave Dosh anywhere near your hair. Our kids' hair is suffering big time because of oh, Dosh's man. barber skills. They, they, yeah, they just I've don't exist been here. to their house a couple of times and I keep it very short, but uh, I just haven't. I've, I've made a couple appointments that I missed at the, the poor, poor uh, barbershop jacks over here and I'm getting I'm getting a little fro going on. You got to so. get the locals to like you, Brian. You know what I mean? You can't be just not showing up. <laughs> I'm sorry that I put you through looking at this mess, Laura. But we do appreciate you coming on I'm the show. We're here. excited to have I'm you glad on. Glad to be here. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm pumped to share some actionables with you guys today. Uh, Nate, cheers for that introduction. Yeah, really. Uh, Clover Clover has existed for over three and a half years now. Really, how it even came about was um, family business. Um, it it went from six and a half million to last year they did two hundred and forty million, but. We sold to the Wrench Group at 110 million, and it was in and around the time that um, I came into the Kellys' lives. And Paul Kelly, my father-in-law, fortunately uh, liked me. Uh, although I actually thought that their Parker and Sons company was a company that helped people with Parkinson's, and I was like, "Oh, I'm, you know, marrying into a very noble <laughs> company. This is awesome. Chances are they're good people. This is good." Uh, but I, I later learned that um, my background in like traveling and, and working with like billion-dollar companies and stuff was going to become super useful in the home service space. So. After they sold, um, there was like tons of companies just approaching uh, Josh and I just so happened to be in his company and I, I have quite a background in business that I ended up being, you know, a value to these conversations and all of a sudden Paul is like, start a business, like, 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 do I have to really push you to this? There's clearly opportunity and uh, three and a half years later, 369 members um, later across the world, mainly United States, Canada, some New Zealand, some Australia. I got to get people to buy into us in Ireland. Haven't pushed enough, but maybe I should. It's disgraceful, really. But uh, here we are. It's been kind of a... Why, why Ireland of all places? Why would you say that? I, I, don't, I don't know understand. if anyone can. I don't get if the reference. If anyone can, you know, guess from the accent. <laughs> I like potatoes. I certainly like whiskey. Uh, if you're ever in Phoenix and want a bit of company, you're welcome over for a beer. I am great company when it comes to sharing a beer or whiskey. If you've good stout, like, then you're just welcome. The doors are open for you 24 hours, like, all the time. So. <laughs> well, we were pleased to have you on the show, Laura, and uh, it... What is that background exactly? You say you were dealing with billion dollar companies and that's uh, usually not in the pedigree of most of the guests that we have on. So why don't you share a little bit about that experience? Yeah. Um, 
uh, I went to college and I was studying business, like business optimization. So like business growth on steroids, essentially. Uh, what, it re- what, what causes the biggest organizations in the world to scale and what causes those that actually start small to also scale? What are the variables that coexist amid them all? Um, and I won various awards, valedictorian, although I didn't think I was a valedictorian standard. I didn't even believe me, believe them when they called my name out. And it, it, uh, it uh, allowed me to qualify for... You'd have to explain for... what that means to Brian. He, he doesn't know what <coughs> valedictorian is. <laughs> I feel like you're just being... Uh, <laughs> I mean, they had that in my high school. But anyway, uh, it, it, in a nutshell, Nate, it won me various awards, but it allowed me to come to the States. In the States, I traveled with a venture capitalist, Google, and big, uh, like... Uh, a, a, a venture capitalist and Google, and what we did was we di- we we built business growth events, which allowed me dive even deeper into what causes organizations to grow. Then, when I transitioned into the home service space, uh, we were diving in deep with home service companies, and like Parker and Sons as an example, I saw various things that they're doing very well that many of many larger companies are also doing. So, the the, the lesson there is. Doing well in business is business, despite the freaking industry you're in. Um, but I've niched down and I've seen so many things that have allowed home service companies succeed. And the seven tips I'm given today are for literally anyone in the home service space that wants to grow a successful company. We, uh, the reason Clover's had the biggest impact in the industry is because of our program called Contractor Catapult. And when anyone works with us, we give them a seven day free trial to see if like we're a fit for each other. So my plan for your guys audience today is literally give away the seven secrets that they get in the trial. In the trial, we actually help you like incorporate the seven secrets, but my plan is to make them as actionable as possible that you can literally take them and run. Um, these secrets are the Parker and Sons are literally implementing right now. Some of the biggest organizations in the, in, in the industry are, are incorporating them right now. Brian, I've shared many of them with you. And um, yeah, happy to kind of dive in and, and, and give them away. We're looking forward to that as well. And why don't you give us the list off the top here and then we'll dive into each one as we go through it. So give us the seven. Yep. Yeah, so um, the DP report, which is the number one report that will literally change everything. So I want to put this in perspective before I do that. Let me list them all first, as you asked. The DP report, the number one report that will change everything. The O oh, by the way script, which is the, the, the three words that will turn your call center into a profit center. The I, no, the I noticed most of why formula, which is mastering the art of selling literally anything in the home, whatever home service space you're in. The levers mindset, it's achieving your goals without, it's, a, it's creating a culture where you never miss goals. Is creating a proactive, innovative com- culture. Uh, number five is the I noticed uh, most of why approach when it comes to motivating your techs on the field and building competitions among your techs that actually convert and work. Uh, number six is breaking through emotional barriers. Um, creating a winning relationship with your GM is really what that means. And the, the seventh one is taking control of your marketing. Stop, instead of blaming your marketing, how can you actually set correct expectations with your marketing company that you actually get a lot of calls on your board with a low cost per acquisition and then convert the calls that you actually bring in. So um, that's the seven and I'm happy to break them down for you. Fantastic. That's but just, a great just teaser. Just to swing back real quick, uh-huh. there were two I noticed most of why, yes. right? Okay. Yeah. The I noticed most of why formula. One external, one internal. E- yes and no. Uh, one is actually how to use it and the the number one is actually explaining it and the other one is how to roll it out successfully in your organization gotcha well let's let's roll this out successfully on the podcast so let's start with number one tee it up for us yeah uh the dp report so i want to put this in context for you i i'm hungry to learn from those who actually know their stuff um, and I want to say a different word than stuff, but I'm mindful that this is a PG podcast. Um, in, <laughs> in, so I interview the best. Nate won't listen. Otherwise <laughs> that's the only reason we do it. I, uh, I'm, I, I interview the best people in the industry. So I ask them commonly, what is the number one thing you attribute most to your success? Paul Kelly, my father-in-law says that it's the DP report and the DP report means a daily progress report where essentially every single day 
You go in, uh, well, you work out what you want your revenue goal to be for the year. Then you break it down per quarter. Then you break it down per week, per month, and then per week. Then every day you go in and you populate the revenue you took in from the day before. And you start to see whether you're on track for your revenue for the month. So many contractors that come in to Clover first, uh, uh, or, or many contractors in general that before they start working with Clover, I ask them, and this is a common flipping conversation. I'm like, okay, um, they tell me that they want to have a million dollar month and say it's the 27th of the month and they've done 20, they say it's the 27th of the month and they've done 750 K it's too freaking late in the month to make up that much revenue. So therefore they become a culture of like missing goals. Um, and that, that, that's, that's, that, that missing goal culture becomes part of the culture and it affects the talent. It, it affects the talent you attract. It affects everything. It becomes what you accept as an organization. It, it, and, and, that, and that trend trickles down. Instead, with a DP report, it allows you to be proactive. So when you're tracking revenue every day, you see on the eighth of the month that you're not trending toward goal. And then you, you, then you can start being proactive. Then you start saying to your organization, okay, what are some levers? What are some things we can do today to generate more revenue today or this week? What are some levers we can pull to generate more calls on the board? What are they? So you, you don't just say, you don't just, um, accept the numbers for what they are. You create this proactive organization where you, where in your, in your morning huddles, you're like, okay, all right, install didn't do that great yesterday. What are some things we're going to actively do to generate more calls today? What are some things we're going to actively do to, to bring in more revenue? Is that what, what's our promotion that we're going to run this week? What is an email that we could send out to our customer base? What is a text we could send out, of our, out to our customer base? How could, we, how could we incentivize our call center, which I actually prefer to call profit center, um, so that they are actively doing things that bring in more revenue? But then you have to also have an organization that is focused on one goal. And that is meeting the DP goal every single month. So instead of them just hitting their KPIs, you have an organization that is, that is very aware of what the DP goal is. And they're actively striving to hit that goal every single month. And they get bonused accordingly. Um, it changes the freaking entire organization. And I say to people, like, if there's no room for failure, there's no room for innovation. So you say to your call center manager, you say to your CSRs, hey, if there are ways that you believe you can generate more revenue for our organization, I want to know about it. I'm not going to take on every idea, but I want to know about it. Um, and then some of the ideas you're going to execute, some of, some of, them, some of them you are not. But it's the, it's, what it allows for is you to be proactive with your numbers. Many companies aren't even aware of what their numbers are. So what we do in Clover is for every company that comes in, we set up this DP report. So on the 8th of the month, they flag their success manager saying, hey, we're not on track for goal. Um, what are some levers we can pull to generate more revenue? What are some levers we can pull to generate more calls? And from that place, the organization is proactive. From that place, you become, an, you become a culture that hits goals. And, you know, that news spreads. And then you try, start attracting more talent. You start empowering your techs. The experience is better for the customer. Um, that report cannot be underestimated. It's huge. I love that, Laura, and it's a great place to start, of course. Now, there are some companies that are listening to, uh, to yeah. this uh, show, and perhaps they've never even conceptualized such a thing. Or, or maybe uh, they have loosely, but they've never really drawn it into like, you know, uh, the fabric, so to speak. Uh, where should they start? Like, what's, a, what's kind of a baseline you know, way of creating the metric or establishing what's relative to their uh -huh. business? Where can they start? I, out of like just sheerly wanting to serve the industry and tapping into my why, email me at laura at growwithclover.com and I will literally just send you a DP report. If you were listening, like when you do that, I do ask that, and I'll probably say this when I email you the report, but just make a copy um, and then, and then I'll make a copy. I'll send you the instructions on how to set up, set it up. It is super flipping intuitive. Um, when, when you say DP report and you think Excel, many people get concerned that it's going to be complicated, full of formulas, and it's just convoluted and, and, and annoying. I promise you it's built for, it's built to be simple because if something's not simple, it's not scalable and it won't be used. Um, just email Laura at growwithclover.com uh, for the Waste No Day audience. I will literally just email you a copy with instructions on how to use it. All I ask is that you make a copy so you're not editing the live version. Um, and 
I, I, we're here to serve. We're genuinely, wholeheartedly here to serve the ser- serve the um, community. Like, if you don't, if there's something confusing, write to me. I need you to wrap your head around this profound statement. When I ask my father-in-law, what is the number one you thing you attribute to your success the most? Like a two hundred and forty million dollar re- contractor that in, in one market, Phoenix residential, one market. What's the number one thing? He said the DP report. And I, I'm more than happy to give it to you. And I'm, but I don't want to just give it to you and you not to use it. Honestly, pester us. I will show you how to use it. I mean that in every ounce of me. It's a game-changing report. It gives you awareness and it gives your team the um, ability to feel like they actually have ownership over impacting your organization. I love that. She does. She definitely means it because on well, two in-person meetings and multiple conversations and texts with her or her husband they've they just freely give information like you can't believe and that is and that is something with people who actually know what they're doing and, and people they love to they love to share they love to see people grow and help people out it's a poor person keep in mind it's a poor person's mentality i like people who hold stuff to their chest yeah, it's like fear. nonsense it's fear like the the more people that win around you the better you feel and the better you uh, the better the better you feel and the better and the the, the better those around you do the better you will become because you'll just level up accordingly it's such a flawed yep. mentality no but get but get involved get get a hold of clover happy, and see what they can it. do for you and uh keep in mind despite uh, you probably don't know this from her husband being on the show they do this for a living so yeah we <laughs> get involved in the business and see how they can help I, you I literally had this conversation with Brian that m- my husband gets on podcasts all the time and uh, for many many people thought Clover was a marketing company we absolutely are not we help owners and GMs scale their business in a sustainable way so they can you know live the life that they choose to live in an ethical morally fruitful way like period and the fact that Josh isn't doing that, I just want to bang him over the head every day. So if you see him, you <laughs> well, know, you have my permission that. to do so. He's <laughs> doing it, whole, but he doesn't share part it. where we do it for a living is like... <laughs> he's doing it, but he doesn't tell you all on the podcast that he's doing it. So then I feel like our impact is, is, is uh, although 369, there's nothing wrong with that. But anyway. Well, speaking of impact, I mean, one thing that uh, you drew out there was that, uh-huh. uh, you know, creating a culture of missing goals has ripple down effects. And so perhaps, you know, there's some mid-size or even large size companies that are listening to this and they're like, crap, that's us, especially yeah. this year where we have, you know, we've missed budgets or we've, mm-hmm. we've un- overperformed the last three years. And now we're kind of retracting back to maybe what's more of a normal. And we're like, you know, month over month over month, we're missing and missing and missing. If a yeah. company listening to this is finding themselves in that place where they have one way or another found themselves in a place of just continually living in the red, uh-huh. what are they supposed to do? Do we adjust Do we adjust the goals back to like what we think is reasonable and give up on our dream for the year? Or is there some other method that we could employ to avoid this continual culture of failure? Great question. Um, and I'm happy to pivot off these seven and send you the send you the actionables that you're you could include in the show notes if, if we end up doing so, because it, it is a good question. Um, if you continually fail or there's this perception of failing, like even though there could be many wins in a day, but the the mm. what's determined as what's deter what's what's considered a win is minute meeting goal and what's ki- considered a loss is missing it. And your whole organization therefore feels like a failure, even if they've done various good things in a day. Morale will dip. And what will happen is a thing called learned helplessness. They'll feel incapable of being great. And your and, and mediocrity will is literally inevitable. So I would say absolutely reset. Absol- absolutely reset. And, and I also think it's important to ask yourself, why did you miss goal? Almost always. Almost always, the organizations that miss goal is because they do not avidly watch their numbers. They know they're not doing great. They get annoyed by that. And then they scramble in various directions and trying to fix it. But not everybody's on the same page that they know the, or- the team feel that we're not doing as well as we could. But it's literally having a conversation on that same number 
mediocrity M I hate that I hate that mediocrity is not my modus <laughs> operandi you know get that M out of my face Brian so uh, there, wrong one there we go Michigan oh my god it's, it's my it's my University of Michigan uh, Yeti that I'm just pointing oh to for Nate that I'm drinking out of sorry guys for the interruption <sighs> Better be, at least it's a Yeti I, I'm a fan of Yeti so my <laughs> coffee can go cold but it's still kind of hot uh so so uh, I would say reset. However, I'm only I'm only okay with you resetting if if what caused you to miss the goal changes, if that makes sense. So if you miss the goal because you are not looking at your numbers every day, some people look at their numbers, but l- their meetings become a flip and reporting session. They're like, okay, we did this in install yesterday. We did this in plumbing yesterday. And then they go about their day. That's nonsense. That's a waste of time. No brainstorming, no innovation, no like clawing it back. How are we getting it back? Exactly. So horrible meetings to be a part of. It's horrible. Everyone leaves, leaves the place feeling so bloody demoralized. That manager who feels demoralized goes in, say call center manager, goes into the call center. They've just this demoralized energy and the call center feels demoralized for the entire day. And you go into a call center that's actually winning and you feel the energy. It's entirely different. They're high-fiving each other and um, that's contagious. And it's up to a manager to create that energy, but it's up to the person who runs that morning meeting to create a proactive, empowered energy that causes them to leave the meeting and remain empowered and proactive and create team members around them that actually feel like they are in a position to have influence. They are in a position to pull levers that will generate more calls, that will generate more revenue. Um, that's what's pivotal. So I'm okay with you resetting, but own, but if you reset and change nothing, then you're, then what you're telling your team members is we accept failure. We'll just reset and pretend it didn't happen. That's nonsense. You have to have a meeting and say, Hey, I have failed you. I have failed you, but I'm willing to empower you if you're willing to work with me. And I, and I absolutely promise you that you will not just grow professionally, you will not just grow personally, you will also be in a better financial position than you've ever, than you've ever been before. Because when, when we all meet this DP goal report together, this DP goal together, I, will, I promise to reward you. I promise that everybody will see the fruit of us working toward one goal together. And meeting this revenue goal is not that we just become a more wealthy company, it means better service. It means we've been able to reach more people in the community. Um, what does that look like for the uh-huh. for the tech role and the um, I mean and the CSR and yeah I mean us us meeting that goal how is that yeah what's the what's the direct effect that I can feel it even even lower levels of the accountability chart you know yeah uh, because it it really does take the entire team for sure I literally only had this was con- I only had a conversation with someone today and they were like annoyed that um, they felt like their they felt like their techs didn't care enough. And my art, my pushback to them was their techs don't believe that a better life is possible. And that's on you. Um, you need to show them that a great future exists for them in this company. And they need to feel like they, they deserve it. They need to feel like they need to feel like they deserve it. So you can give a person all the like best practices in the world. And if, they are operating from a place of, I don't deserve to work for a company that provides great opportunity. They'll work for a company that doesn't. And if that's your company, it's on you for allowing them believe that. Mm. Mm, um, tough, so tough you, stuff. Yeah, it, it, it is. Like if your techs or your comfort consultants don't feel like they deserve to live an empowered life, they honestly may as well just call it a day and go home. And it's, it's not, if, if, if you're a tech listening to this, I encourage you to put yourself around empowering people that speak words to you, that, sh- that speak words to you that really make you believe that you're, that you're flipping worth it, that you deserve a lot in life. And many times people don't believe they do, and therefore they can be given like the best opportunity in the world and they sabotage it. Um, it, it is it is like we were talking about this on last week's episode too with Richie and Marty. Yeah. And it's like um it really is so all of this winning in life and willing winning and everything is so dependent upon who you're surrounding yourself oh, with. Yeah, all day. Because so much so. Man, I, I get I get um I was talking about, you know, talking too much to people old, old people from my life who yeah. you know, going back Not to old, old life. 
and getting back around people like you and and Tommy Mello and Nate and Mike Vavrick and you know the the guys in Lancaster and the new people I'm around here and it doesn't it doesn't take long being in either world until I start becoming like that world yeah whether it be the the negative mindset that the sky's falling and, and the world's ending or True. or that I, you know the world's doing fine but I'm standing on top of it either way you can float either way based on who you're hanging around it's like so um so it's so so true like like way back in my background i grew up in a small town and like gosh i love the people in my town but it's like crabs in a bucket and it's like you when you're around people that ex when you're around people that accept mediocrity you do too and it not only but but it tends to be one of those crabs starts making it out. Another one crab, grabs a hold of that leg and Pulls them down. yanks them back down. Who do you think it's you way are? worse than just accepting mediocrity. You're you're, you're in a bucket full of magnets holding you down to the bottom of that bucket for sure. And you 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 then become a person that you're not even proud of because you probably you some people pull pull that person who is trying to get out of the bucket down because it makes them mm -hmm. that person makes them feel like crap about themselves. Um, yeah. It's it's I I say this to people every all the time you're the average of the five people you surround yourself by and it's it's way easier than you think to average up your network number number one you have to just believe you're flipping worth it and like if if you believe you're not i genuinely genuinely email me and i'm so happy to personally connect you with people that will help you think differently about yourself when you surround yourself with people who accept mediocrity and think they're not so great you believe that too you therefore believe you don't deserve better people around you and it's this nonsense lie that you tell yourself that holds you back forever it's baloney and it's sad as f but you know it's super super fixable like you said brian you put yourself around these people and all of a sudden you become that and and it's like this overnight thing but it was just this one situational fix that you made happen yeah well seems like a new fix every day but oh, i get you oh i hear you i'm <laughs> it, all about it it's like, always happening it's me all, too. i'm always heading in the right direction me too me too I, if I go home to Kinsale and I spend too long there, I love my home, but quickly I'll start deteriorating, like quickly. Mm. Yeah, that's that's uh, important stuff there, Lauren. What a way to kick it off here. We'd love to spend more time on each individual point, but uh, we do have a list to get through. So yes, we do. why don't you transition us into the key number two? Uh, I will, of course. So the Oh By The Way script, this is going to be a good one for the techs that are listening. For those that have not listened, for those who, have, who do not know the Oh By The Way script, in Parker & Sons and in companies that we've gone into that nail it, that have techs that literally enjoy bringing opportunity up to a customer, they use this. It's, it's, th it's literally the Oh By The Way script. So it's a way of bringing opportunity up to a customer in a passive, non-salesy way. Uh, so I'm going to sell an AC unit, unit using it, but it literally applies to everything. So, uh, oh, sorry. Let's use, before I go to the, oh, by the way, let's, okay. I'm I, my bad. What I meant to say was the, I noticed most of why. Are you having a conversation with Laura right now? We'll go to the, we'll go to the, we'll go to the, <laughs> oh, by, we'll go to the, oh, by the way script here in a sec. We'll go to the, I noticed most of why formula in a sec. The oh, by the way script, let's do this first. This is for the, this is for the call center. More so, the I noticed most of why formula, which is step three, is for the text. Um, oh, nice. The, the, oh, by the way script, uh, for people in the call center, I always like to call, call the call center a profit center. Um, it makes te CSRs think, think about their role differently versus seeing themselves as like an order taker, um, which is not the truth. And sometimes, for unfortunately, People, people think that. So, oh, by the way, script, if you're a CSR or you're a tech that wants to share a nice secret with your CSR or you're an owner, the oh, by the way, script, after the call is booked, after the call is booked and business is secured, the oh, by the way, script is another passive way of bringing opportunity up to a customer. So CSR, I'm going to literally read the script out that we give to CSRs. Uh, oh, by the way, Mrs. Jones, are you going to pay full price today? Mrs. Jones was clearly going to be like, no, I don't want to pay full price. The CSR then says, if you don't want to pay full price, you probably would be interested in our family plan. Notice we use family plan versus maintenance plan. It makes them feel included. You will actually get a discount on today's service and it would probably pay for itself today. Pause. 
then they stack all the benefits of the family plan. The CSR then says, I can actually get you set up right now over the phone. Is this the address we have on file? Name the address. The, is this the address you want associated with, with your credit card? And they say yes. The goal is you're getting many yeses. You're getting many micro yeses, so they're committing to you. Perfect. All I will need now is the credit card you want associated with your account. Pause. Thank you again for trusting us with your home. We will see, we will see you at, confirm the appointment time, have a wonderful day. Um, after the call is booked, using the O oh, by the way and, pay, and, and explaining to the customer why this makes sense for them, the amount of the amount of CSRs that have gone from making a mediocre salary to like taking home 100k a year from literally just using the oh by the way script end of the call oh by the way have you heard about our promotion and all it is doing is ask is is giving the customer the opportunity to say oh no tell me more what's that about and then you get to and within with 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 sharing an opportunity enough with a person you're going to get a few yeses that's the oh by the way powerful let me go you want to you want to real quick uh -huh. I know we got we got five more to get through. Yep. Nate, you want to you want to be the client and let her be the CSR? Go, let's do it. I would love it. I would love it. How many times have you role played on on a podcast, Laura? I I love a bit of role playing. If I if I can't be if I can't make a concept work on the spot, it means it's not that effective. So hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, where do you want to jump into the call? Uh, towards the end, getting ready to hang up. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So. Uh, my, my air conditioner is not working and, uh, well, it's getting cold here. So my, my furnace isn't working here. So I was hoping that you could have a tech come out. Uh, do you guys have like appointments or something that we could select? Uh, yes. Uh, Mrs. Jones, we do tomorrow. Do you prefer mornings or afternoons, Mrs. Jones? <laughs> it's Mr. Jones. Thank you. And I'll Mr. thank you to remember that. <clears throat> sorry. You, sound uh, kind of you sounded kind of feminine to me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't say that. I'm only joking. Don't say that. Well, hey, Laura, it's been great to have you on. We really appreciated everything. Uh <laughs> Ding. Bye. See you never again. Uh, afternoons will be fine. Afternoons. Awesome. So we actually have tomorrow at 1 p.m. or we have tomorrow at 3 p.m., which is better for you. Uh, 1 p.m. is great. Awesome. All right. Well, we look forward to having you. We'll make sure we'll call you ahead of time so you know what tech is coming, when they're coming, and the experience that you can expect when we enter your home. Um, okay. Oh, by the way, Mrs. Jones, do you plan on actually paying full price for, for your service today or tomorrow? Uh, well, is there an alternative? Yeah. Um, uh, my, my bad, uh, Mr. Jones. I, I, I thought you'd, you'd been told. Yeah. Um, we actually offer what's called a family plan. So every time we enter a customer's home, it's our duty to ensure it's safe and it's incredibly efficient. To do that, we check in with our customers on an ongoing basis throughout the year through our family plan agreement. I'm happy to ensure that um, that we do visit your home and we keep your, we keep your home efficient, keep your electricity bills down. Um, tell me, Mrs. Jones, keeping your home efficient, is that something that you even talk to your husband about? your wife about? <laughs> uh, you know, I can't say I that like that's... the other way better. Keep, keep <laughs> yeah, going. Sorry, yeah, you I, doing, I'm, I'm confused on Nate's gender today. I'm sorry, Nate. Go ahead. <laughs> Nate usually is too. So it's fine. <laughs> you know, I can't say that uh, home efficiency is a regular topic at our, at our kitchen table. Okay. So, um, and so what I, what I'd encourage you to do, Mr. Jones is Check out your utility bill, and I want you to Google how much you can actually save when your HVAC unit is operating in an, in an efficient way. I am going to go ahead and schedule you, not just for this call, but in a call, uh, in a, call a month from now, and we're going to make sure that your, your system is operating super efficiently. I'm going to pop a form over to you here after the call. Have a read through it. We're going to ensure that efficiency is literally how your home runs, and you save so many dollars that you can use, that do you can use those dollars to go on vacation or to or to do that job in your home that you've not been able to do. I'll pop that information over to you after the call. But what I want to tell you, Mrs. Mr. Jones, thank you for trusting us. It's my promise to you that we'll keep your home operating efficiently. After the, after the call here today, check out your email and I'm going to share with you some efficiency tips that um, I'm personally committed to ensuring uh, is part of uh, your, your financial saving methods annually. Okay. Um... Yeah, any way we can save money would be great. Yeah. Awesome. Happy to do it. Keep an eye on your email. 
Looking forward okay. to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you. So I really, really easy peasy, easy peasy. Really, all it is is saying "oh" by the way allows them ask you a question, and then then they're in. Then then there's and the, curiosity. And the, and the "oh" by the way for for people who have been in the field long periods of time on the phone, long periods of time, and and trying over and over to figure out ways to softly transition into the next um, sales opportunity or presentation or whatever you want to call it. Oh, by the way, is so much easier than, oh, you should. For sure. Everyone's like, <laughs> don't tell me what I should do. Yeah, your defenses are going up. Sure. Even if you're not that uh, brazen sure. about it, as Laura is so aggressive sure. over here. The, <laughs> but, um, but in their head, they're saying, don't this, tell me what I should yeah, do. Yeah, the simple thing where it's like, oh, here we go again. Yes. Here goes the sales pitch. You yes. know, here, here it comes yes. with the extended warranty or, yes. or what have yes. you. Um, it does put defenses up. For sure. It makes you put your dukes up. It does. And it does seem like we've been having a lot of people... Sorry, I have been having a lot of people hit me up uh, regarding call call takers now and, and getting plans on the phone or getting calls, uh-huh. outbounded calls booked as a result probably of, of the uh, Mike Vavrick episode that we did. And um, I didn't I didn't realize we had that many people listening that care about the CSR part of this, although we always do try to make it a point to, to talk to them in the episodes. But I, I'd love that we're actually doing a little bit of scripting and role play for a CSR because yeah. there are a lot of things you can overcome in the home when it doesn't go great the way you open it when you're standing in front of someone and and you're not gone until you walk out the door man when you're on the phone I've never had to sell anything on the phone um and you have no eye contact and you can't see body language right. and you have they can very easily get out of this conversation at any time by pressing that red button boom this conversation's over they don't have to be polite on the way out. It's a really a different look and it's a much more difficult sale. So anything we can do to just give a little bit of a shortcut um, or, you know, a, 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 a code, a cheat code, if you will, for sure, to getting through that is is huge. It's immense. So we appreciate you sharing that one for sure. For sure. The key is like and non-threatening Laura, words. Go ahead. Laura, the oh, by the way, is that mm-hmm. uh, your recommendation is strictly use that over the phone or is that also uh, something that could be employed in, in the field? It can definitely, it can definitely be uh, employed in the field. Like what Brian said, it's, it's a, it's, it's a non, it's many people unintentionally use threatening terms, um, like terms that make a person put their guard up and your role as a person who mm-hmm. is in any interaction with a customer, even in life, if you're trying to get buy-in by your husband, your wife, your kids, if you use, um, if you use language that can cause that the receiver to put their guard up, your influence goes away down. Oh, automatically. Automatically. So yeah, so it's real, real quick. Uh, Nate, if you want to be Mrs. Jones again, um, very easy for me. Just finished putting your tankless water heater in, just finished putting your, your, um, actually Richie did it on the show last week where he said, Hey, while we're finishing up your system here, would it be a terrible idea to go ahead, you know, to be, go ahead and, and clean the duct work out. But for me, it'd be, uh, just finished up your tankless here if you want to take a look at it. Oh, by the way, fill in the blank. By the way, we have these water treatment systems that will really protect this new tankless you had put in here today. But it's so much easier than going, okay, we're done with that. Now let's talk about your water. Yeah, it's like, oh, uh, no, <laughs> ah, you're, no, you're done. I don't need you in my home anymore. Thank you. Yeah, uh, here comes the salesman again. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're so right. You're so right. Um, uh, just one more thing on that, Laura. Um, if not used with the correct tonality or the correct uh, timing, is it possible that, oh, by the way, sounds gimmicky? I don't think so. It's sorry, I'm not Laura. No, I, I, bro, you I, have to be. I, you have to be some kind of robot to mess that up. Yeah, it's such a. It's it. It's almost what it. When a person says, "Oh, by the way," it's like, "Oh, I forgot." Like, and and when a and and um, oh, I'm human and I just forgot. I meant to mention this to you. Sorry. Yeah, like, how disarming. It's so it's, disarming. It's a vulnerable thing to say. Yeah. Yep. You're being vulnerable by saying that. Oh, by the way, like. I'm human, just like you just said. I'm human too, yeah. and I forgot something. I'm human too, and I just forgot something. And yeah. to to, to on, using that word vulnerability, vulnerability is the key to connection, and and and, mm-hmm. and it is. Oh, by the way, I forgot something. It, you're 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 human. You're a normal human being who forgets stuff, just like the person you're chatting. Put 
put your headphones back on. You need to hear this part, Nate. <laughs> we want you to hear this vulnerability part, buddy. We want to connect with you too. Right. Did you say move on to number three, Brian? Uh, thanks for that. <laughs> <segment. So. laughs> the Laura, uh, you've covered so far the DP report, the daily progress report, the oh, by the way script. What is the secret number three? This is the I notice most of why. A passive way to bring opportunity up to a customer. So it can be used to sell anything. I noticed, Mrs. Jones, you have a 10 plus year old system. Most of our customers consider replacing after 10 years because it saves them so much money on their utility bills. May I ask why you have not? I noticed, Mrs. Jones, you don't have an air scrubber. Most of our customers consider having an air scrubber because there's... Your, your, your lungs are the number one filter in your home. You can either buy a filter or be a filter. May I ask why you've not considered buying an air scrubber? And, but usually with the, I notice Mrs. Jones, you have a 10 plus year old system. Most of our customers, uh, may I ask why you have not? What you're doing there is like Mrs. Jones will commonly say, oh, what do you mean? It's a, like when you say saving me money on my utility bills, like, what do you mean? How much are you saving me? The, it gives the tech an opportunity to educate. And when it gives the tech an opportunity to educate, it also gives the tech the opportunity to influence. And then it gives the tech the opportunity to print, present options. And Brian, you've heard, you've heard how we suggest you present options is, here's what you have to do, here's what you should do, and if this was my mother's house, here is what I would do. It, like, as a tech, if you're listening to this, and you go good, better, best, bronze, silver, gold, and then you do, here's what you should, here's what you have to do, here's what you should do. If it was my mother's house, here's what I would do. Watch how your conversion changes. We've tested this with hundreds of companies. It's, so it's you're, like, going, you're going bottom up as opposed to top down? Yeah, if by you, saying, by you saying the, well, it depends on the order of the call. So I would say these are tools that you keep in your toolbox and you apply them appropriately. The I notice most of why allows you bring opportunity up to the customer. Techs commonly use it to flip a lead to their comfort consultant. Um, it's commonly used for that, but it also, it also, depending upon the, the roles you've assigned in your organization, it can transition you nicely into presenting options. And the right, better so way let's to do, present options are... Let's do some rapid fire here real quick. I'll give you yeah. a scenario and you give me the one sentence Done. I noticed most of why. All right. Done. Uh -huh. um, uh, flipping a CA, flipping a CA lead or an HVAC into uh -huh. a CA lead. Yep. You want me to do it? Go. You want me to do it right now? Yep. Okay. Go ahead. Yep. Um, I noticed, Mrs. Jones, you have a ten plus year old system. Mo Mrs. Jones, most of our customers who have a ten plus year old system, they they consider replacing it because it just saves them so much money on their utility bills. Mrs. Jones, may I ask why you have not? You should probably right. say. Go ahead. All right. Let's say uh, water treatment that. They should have water treatment in so their let, house let, and let, they don't have water treatment. Let, let's, let's track back there because you asked me to do the flip. What typically Mrs. Jones will like ask questions and say mm -hmm. like, oh, I didn't know how much it saved me. And this is where the tech flips it. This is how the tech flips it. Mrs. Jones, I, I, I hear you. Um, it's actually amazing how much money it's actually saved me personally and so many of our customers. Here's what I'm going to do. We have a comfort consultant that specializes in saving our customers money. I'll have him come out to you tomorrow. Um, he may even have time this afternoon. Let me ask you, Mrs. Jones, for him to have a conversation with you and save you money, do you, is, what's better for you? Would it be this afternoon or tomorrow morning? And then she'll give you the option and then boom, the lead is flipped to the comfort consultant and then it's on the comfort consultant to close the sale. Oh, nice. Got it. All right. Uh, plumbing scenario. So uh, the homeowner has hard water, but they have no water treatment currently. Go. Okay. Welcome to Phoenix. Welcome to Phoenix. So here's I'm here's where I am going to be um, utterly pointed with you. When it comes to exact breakdown of different scenarios, I'm gonna. Do you guys include show notes in your podcasts? Nah, very little. Okay. I I I'm gonna pop over the various different scenarios when it comes to plumbing. Josh is more the man to ask on the various different breakdown of the scenarios. And I'll send, I'm happy to send it over to your audience. But if you're listening to this, I challenge you to say, okay, using the I notice most of why, using this framework, how can I apply it to anything I'm selling? And literally like anything. So I'm less technical. So to even speak to that, I'm going to just use inaccurate terms. But like I was trying to a pest control guy today and... It came up and I said, 
I, I used the, I said, I noticed Mrs. Jones, I noticed Mrs. Jones that you don't have a maintenance agreement plan. Um, most of our customers consider having a maintenance agreement plan because when you don't prevent pests coming, they just bloody show up and they're kind of gross. May I ask why you've not considered, you know, getting, getting a maintenance plan? Oh, well, I, I, I didn't know I actually had to prevent them. I thought I just had to take care of them when they came. No, that's actually why they come because you don't prevent them. Um, I'm happy to assist you in ensuring that that doesn't happen for you in your home. Uh, and that's pest control. Literally, you can apply it to everything. Pest, pest control is something we're currently encountering because we seem to get a freaking lot of them in our house. Um, <laughs> so I can speak to it with, with knowledge. And what you learn about me is unless I can speak to something with knowledge, I won't speak to it at all. What I do know is in all the companies we've worked with, the hundreds of them, despite the, despite the industry, I notice most of why is used. Like Tommy Mello, I, have, I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to garage doors. He uses, I notice most of why to sell garage doors. Pest control, same thing. Parker and Sons, the I noticed most of why was actually formed for Parker and Sons in Parker and Sons, and it's used in electrical, plumbing, and HVAC. So as a listener, think about the various things you sell and role play with yourself as you're driving in your car, how you can apply it to the thing that you try to sell the most and give it a whirl. And I can almost bet you your average ticket will go up. Well, let, let's see how versatile this is. Let me give it a yes. shot here just off the yes. cuff. So. do it. Hey, hey, Brian, um, I noticed you continually cheer for the maize and yellow or whatever you call those Michigan people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most rational people have <laughs> given up on that team long ago. And I was just kind of wondering. You mean the ones why, that won the Big Ten the last two years? You, you mean you mean why would you Penn continue State's cheering in that Big for Ten a team too, that right? got slaughtered sure. in the playoffs <laughs> last year? I don't remember I, the playoffs. <laughs> Is that like an accurate scenario, Laura? Do you think that would apply? Then, yeah, then you get insight into why Brian's so crazy, you know? See, it's just, it's, 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 just, let's, it's a powerful let's, formula. Let's hit the sparklers with one. Like the, um, hey, hey, Mrs. Minnick, I noticed that you have a, sorry. Hey, Mrs. Minnick, I noticed that you don't have a whole home surge protector. Most of our clients choose to have a whole home surge protector not only to protect their appliances and, and uh, everything against the possibility of a surge or lightning strike, but also because if something was to happen, it would, it would uh, you know, cause you an insurance claim versus just this thing going out. Uh, which <laughs> I forgot what the may last I ask? word was. May I ask? Uh, may, yeah. <laughs> may I ask why you haven't chose to do that yet? chosen to do that yet is that what you would say may i ask why you would why you have yeah josh josh says can i ask may i ask again it's using every word and term you can to 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 create this to like bring a person's armor down may i ask is more polite it tends to bring a person's armor down um is it yeah that, okay that, that that's that's exactly it it can be used with anything it can be yeah used. laura i noticed i noticed that you don't have a whole home surge protector to protect your appliances no. most of our clients choose to have one of these not only to protect this big, beautiful, uh, flat screen TV you have on the wall and this brand new smart refrigerator you got going, but also the little things that you don't pay much attention to and you wouldn't believe what a surge can do. Would you mind sharing why you haven't done that yet? Honestly, I, 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 I didn't know I needed one. I'm not even fully sure what you're talking about. Can you educate with hmm. me on like, like, what is this and why, why you believe it's important? Uh, I believe it's important, one, because I've seen the difference in homes that take a surge or a lightning strike or even the little micro surges that come in from the power company where it's just kind of yeah. the, the, the power's going up and down and up and down. And the, the even the small wear and tear that it has on the appliance, bringing the life down from, say, 10 years to seven years to five years. But really, when the big things happen and you have a surge protector, you have a surge protector that gets fried uh -huh. versus when you don't have a surge protector and now you, you're replacing all your TVs and your appliances and Hey, you have insurance. It's, um, most people have around a thousand dollar deductible. Uh, that's great, but you're still going to pay that thousand dollar deductible and have the hassle of all these appliances getting torn out and replaced. And who knows what the insurance company is going to give you towards them. You know, some, some kind of prorated, deal and you're not going to have what you had before but it's just something you don't have to deal with yeah and like like what what so so where you're going with that brian is like it, it's it's this it's educating educating the 
Customers make moves in an attempt commonly to prevent future pain. Um, and, all, and even more so, it's cur- even more so current pain. But something that I would encourage, like you add to that, and that is the, is like, Mrs. Jones, honestly, if it were my mother's house, and I, if it were my mother, I would put this in my mother's house. Like it's, it's some, it's, and that's where like, that's when I, that's where, I, that's where I encourage like people to be flexible with these frameworks. Like in a conversation like that, yeah, you're not presenting options, but it's way more saying that this is something that you, you're like passionate that your mom has in her house allows, creates more trust, but also allows you portray your passion for all, for them also having that thing in their house. Yeah, sure. So this is something, this is something I would absolutely be recommending if I was talking to my mom right now. In fact, uh, I would, I would have one at home. I would have one in my mom's house. Would I, I happen to have one on the truck. Would you like me to go ahead and grab it and throw it in for you? Like, like people do that average ticket just goes up and I I challenge Mm. you to literally just give it a whirl. Like what's, what's the worst thing that could happen? Yeah, you don't know this, but uh, you should listen to this show more, and you'll really tighten up your role play skills. <laughs> but we uh, we actually talked about this, I think, on the episode after I was at your guys' house last time. Oh yeah, uh, we did. Yeah, I asked Josh if we could go ahead and talk yeah, about it on the show. He's like, it. yeah, yeah, go for it. it. Um, it. And I gave him credit for it, obviously. But yeah, we we talked about it uh, in great depth and what a game changer it can be and i have our team doing it now uh in the home mostly with water treatment but i'm i'm a huge fan of these little these things like uh most of i noticed why and these little small tricks that you can implement that are you know because you're you're already talking about something that's very very good for for the homeowner right Right. if you're not you shouldn't be talking about it so if you're talking about something that's great for them anyway and and it's something that they can afford. That's that fits into the budget. Isn't going to take food out of the fridge or or keep them from paying the light bill. Hundred percent. They they're going to do this. Oh. The the one thing that could stop them is you. A hundred percent. So this isn't manipulation. This is removing phrases that we're saying currently that are getting us further from our goal and their goal of having a better, more efficient, safer home to live in. And you're adding in phrases that are getting you and the client closer to that goal. That's it. Like bang on. And when you said when, when, and, and all of these, like, I guess what many people call tactics, some people also think manipulation and many people think manipulation is bad and manipulation definitely has a negative connotation. Um, a dude called Rick Hutchinson, the gentleman passed away, um, uh, last year, his, he, he shared this with his text. He's one of the, he was one of the most renowned sales trainers in the industry. He said, sales is only bad if you lie. Sales is only bad if you lie. If you're using techniques, tips, best practices to allow you positively influence a customer in the direction, in a direction that absolutely serves them, you're doing right by the customer. 100%. That's a great, uh, that's a great quote. Oh. Sales is only bad if you lie. And it only got a bad rap because people flip and lie. so many people would get in there and yeah, and become yeah. just horrible versions of themselves sure. to meet their goal. For sure. For sure. And that's nonsense. Like we all want to sleep at night. We all want to, um, the, uh, a gentleman called Keith Cunningham, he's a great book called the road less stupid. And he said, I have two goals in my life. Great title. It's a great title. He's, he's an old man. So if you ever get the opportunity to listen to him, the dude's about to pass on Ooh, we're get him on yeah so uh so 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 hear him out but his two goals in life i asked him what are your two big go- this, this dude's a billionaire incredible guy what are your two biggest goals in life and he said to die with alignment in my heart and for the people for the people that i love for the people that i love love me and honestly like if, if if you go out that way with you have alignment that you did the right bloody thing and you can still like get on to do great in life and the people you love, love you. Jeannie Mac, that's a life, that's a life well lived. Um, hmm. And, and s- like selling to people, giving them, them the opportunity to do business with you because you're going to do business the right way. That's a gift that you have the opportunity to share with people and bloody share the heck out of it because you're doing right by the customer. Uh, super practical stuff already, Laura. And this has been fantastic. And yet it's like the time has just flown by and we have four more 
uh, secrets to cover. And I guess we're just going to have to cover that in a part two episode because I'm afraid we're not going to have time to get to it today. So uh, what we'll do is we'll come back uh, next week and start on secret number four and go from there and bring the conclusion of these seven great keys to uh, changing your business and taking it to the next level and uh, make sure that our audience is aware of that. So thank you so much for bringing great content and really healthy and vibrant conversation to our audience today. And just the practicality of these three things alone, they're going to need a week just to break this stuff down on their own. So, mm-hmm. so it's kind of a blessing in disguise that we couldn't get to all seven because it would just be water from the hose. But uh, we'll be able to kind of sprinkle this in a little bit and allow for some digestion. Looking forward to it, Nate and Brian. Um, uh, always glad to be here and definitely make sure you implement these ideas. If you've any, if you've any struggles in implementing them, email me. I'm, I'm genuinely happy to just uh, give you guidance with, 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 with open arms and, um, yeah, uh, these secrets work. Let's, 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 let's roll them out. To all the techs out there, um, your client that you're going to see just texted me and said, if you use the, I noticed most of why they're not going to make it easy. They're not going to give up right away. But if you use it effectively and keep trying, they're going to buy today. CSRs, your client just texted me the same thing. So give it a whirl. (laughs) Give it a whirl. Good stuff, Laura. Thanks so much for joining us today. We look forward to hearing from you again next week. Looking forward to it. Tell Josh we apologize for keeping you late. Yeah, we got to make this date night extra special for his. Uh, his, his I'll just give him. I'll just give him a, a couple extra martinis, and he'll be all right. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Thanks, Laura. See you guys, of course. Hey, that's a wrap for this podcast. What great content Laura is already bringing to the table, and we are on the edge of our seats, waiting to hear the rest of the seven secrets. But you'll have to tune into that next week and make sure you capture the rest of that. But for right now, you have enough homework to work on yourself, establishing a DP report working on your oh, by the way statement, and also getting the I noticed most of why into your regular conversation. Thanks so much to Laura and all the people there at Clover who are doing fantastic things. If you're interested in learning more about her um, her information or her business or the things that they're doing there, we'll make sure that we get you that uh, either on social media or we'll capture that in the second podcast that's coming up next week. But for now, we want to leave you with our weekly challenge, which is to choose to wake up every single morning and waste no day.